So in the previous video, we discussed how we can <coughs> find the uh, six, the three or six trig functions of an angle on the unit circle, given a given given a certain coordinate, right? So just to recap, just to sort of review what we learned, let's just do this little warm up here. So just an example problem. I didn't want to squeeze into the other video because it would take a little bit of time. So, <coughs> so. For this, um, let's see, uh, on this circle, find the six trig functions of theta. So let's start, the three trig functions. So the sine, if you remember, is the y coordinate, or root 7 over 3. Okay. The cosine of theta is equal to the x coordinate, which is equal to root 2 over 3. The tangent of theta is equal to y over x, which is equal to 7 over 3 divided by root 2 over 3. And we just use our little trick here. So this guy comes up there, this guy goes down here. These two cancel out. So this becomes root 7 over root 2. Now you could either leave it this way or you could multiply it by a conjugate to get rid of the radical underneath which would give you root 14 over 2 okay so those are your answers so that's how you do it again it's just about like you could memorize this that you could memorize that sine is equal to y cosine is equal to x and tangent is equal to y over x you can memorize that but again it's not going to really help you unless you unless you know the underlying concepts behind it which we talked about in the previous video so just to, just to just to uh, say it again there's uh, <coughs> it's important to know how you get a certain derivation before rather than just blindly memorizing it okay because if you know how you get it then i think that knowledge is much more valuable than just memorizing it because you may get a better grade today but in the long run, you're not really learning anything, okay? So, now let's move on to some things that I, to what I really want to talk about in this video. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about quadrants. Quadrants. Again, this is just something that people is usually taken for granted for me to, as memorization. But I'm just going to show you how it actually works so that you are not left memorizing and you're using logic rather than just memorization to solve these to work with this okay so as so as you know again it's just important to know that the circle is on a graph okay so there will be like coordinates and all the rules of like reflection and all that stuff still apply so just as a little thing that a little bit of background info so again let's just take a coordinate and give it the point x comma y okay this could be any number again so now what would happen if we reflected this across the y-axis over here and put it over here? If we reflected it, well, if anything reflects over the y-axis, then its x-coordinate becomes negative, right? So this would be, I'm just going to highlight it. So negative x, and I'll just make the y black. Negative x, comma y. Okay. Now, what would happen if we reflected this across the y-axis now? So uh, across the x-axis now. If we, reflect, if we reflect it off the, across the y-axis, the x-coordinate becomes negative. If we reflect across the x-axis, then... I'm just going to... I'm a bit OCD here. Then we know that our y-coordinate is going to be negative, right? So our x will stay the same because it's on the same side of the y-axis. But our y coordinate is going to be negative. Okay. Whoopsies. Um, yep. So I. So it's the y coordinate is going to be negative because you are reflecting across the x-axis. Again, just you don't even need to think of these as being points on a circle. Just think of them as regular coordinates, like in like algebra or geometry this regular coordinates on a graph you don't even need to see the circle 
for what I'm doing right now. Now, lastly, if you were to reflect this entire thing over the origin, which is this guy right here, this point, if you were to reflect it over the origin, which is in essence flipping it over both the x-axis and the y-axis at the same time, then suddenly both the x and the y are negative. Okay, negative x comma negative y. So, but this is nothing new. This is just rules of coordinates in geometry and algebra. So if you flip it across the x, uh, y axis, the x is negative. Flip it across the x axis, a uh, y becomes negative. Flip it across the origin, then both are negative. And again, you can just see this by, so if we just like assign numbers onto the number line, like say this is one and this is negative one and this is one. This is negative one. If we just wrote this stuff out, then we would kind of see how this would apply. So if we actually plugged in numbers for x and y, and you looked at them in a graph, you would see how this happens, okay? Now, how does this pertain to the unit circle now? So if you remember in the previous video and in the warm-up we just did, we discussed that the sine of an angle, of that angle there, is the y-coordinate and the sine of the angle here th wait i like sine a lot don't i the cosine of the angle is equal to x and the tangent of theta equal to y is equal to y over x okay we learned this last video and that applies for this coordinate here but now over here the sine is the same sine of theta is going to be equal to y but now cosine of theta because this is negative x over 1 this will be guess what negative x okay and our tangent oh gosh and our tangent is going to be y over negative x okay so now we already see that two of our four fun two of our three functions are negative because our x just because our x coordinate is negative okay now moving down the circle here we see sine of theta is going to be negative y here because the y coordinate is negative negative y cosine of theta is equal to negative x okay and then the tangent of theta is going to be negative y over negative x which just ends up being y over x okay so again we already see that two of our three functions are negative so this is just positive because you know negative divided by negative is just positive so this is positive other two are negative okay now over here our sine of theta is again negative why because our y is negative cosine of theta is just x because x is positive and tangent of theta is negative y over x so again two of the three functions are negative okay so I hope you're just starting to see a little correlation here between the sine of the function and the sine of the coordinate so whenever the y coordinate is negative sine is negative so let's just write this stuff out here because this is helpful info if y is negative sine is negative okay 
and you can see that right because the sine is basically the y value of the coordinate and naturally if the y coordinate is negative then so will the sine and now if x is negative if x is negative then the cosine will be negative negative and again you can see how this works right because if the x coordinate is negative then by definition because the cosine is the x coordinate it's going to be negative right now lastly the tangent just gets a little bit tricky so if any one is negative tangent is negative so this but this year will be just a little bit careful because it says if any one is negative not both so and you know you can just sort of just think of this logically so tangent is y over x right so if the y is negative and the x is not it's going to be negative if the x is negative and the y is not still negative if both are negative then the negative and negative cancel each other out as you see here and just you get positive and if not if not if both are positive then nothing happens it's just positive so this is the function is this is the principle on which quadrants work so this is called quadrant one this is called quadrant two this is called quadrant three and this is called quadrant four so this is yeah i just explained everything about the coordinates that you need to know so if it's in quadrant one then because both the x and the y coordinate are positive all everything is positive so everything all the functions are positive in quadrant two because the x coordinate is negative and the the x coordinate is, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive only the sine is positive and down here in quadrant three because both y and x are negative the only th the only function that's positive is tangent because it's y it's y over x and the two cancel each other out and in quadrant four only the y is negative so therefore only sine and tangent are negative and cosine is positive because the x coordinate is positive so this just tells you this is just a quick way to tell to say what is positive and what is not so an acronym you could use to describe this is all students take calculus so this is just a useful way to memorize which one is positive and negative but again i don't encourage you to do this but if you just remember the logic we used here you can sort of figure out what's going to be positive and negative just by yourself so i hope this was helpful and i'll see you again later